With me today is Dr. Effie Hapsha, prosthodontist at Prosthodontics Associates. She is here to present a case that many dentists will come across where a patient presents with an implant retained crown that was cemented on but became loose. Dr. Hapsha, thank you for accepting our invitation and welcome to our Oasis conversation. Thank you, Shiraz. So before we dive into the case, Dr. Hapsha, can you briefly uh, state what is the main point or the main technique involved in this case? Sure. Um, when it comes to restoring implants, whether they're individual crowns or multiple units of fixed partial dentures, we have the option of either cementing the prosthesis on, directly onto abutments or using screw retention. Um, my preference is always screw retention, and one of the biggest benefits of that is retrievability. Um, one of the issues with cementing crowns on, uh, on custom posts is that you may end up in a situation where the abutment screw comes loose and you need to retrieve that screw in order to tighten the crown back into place. So the case that I want to present is basically a situation where a patient came in, um, he was referred for uh, assessment of this loose implant crown. Um, the implant crown was cemented, was cemented on a custom abutment about you know, five years prior to the patient coming to see me, and he presents with a loose crown. So I want to show basically how we can deal with that, um, you know, practical tips for the general practitioner to be able to dive in there and predictably um, assess the, uh, the situation and retrieve the loose screw. Perfect. So let's go and explore the case. So here's the case. The patient presents with the loose crown, um, as I said before, uh, that's cemented on a custom abutment on the 2-6. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, the patient had the crown inserted about five years prior and came in with the complaint of a loose crown. And so the first thing we want to do is, of course, gain the history, try to understand what crown, uh, what implant system they use, all the typical things that you would normally, um, normally get from, from the patient. Um, but the next step is to assess the case radiographically. So just by looking at the case over here, you can, you know, just a little tip is that if you look at the long axis of the implant, you can see that it comes, it sort of leans in a mesial direction like this. So if one were to, to guess as to where um, the access screw for the abutment would be, you would probably be more inclined to look toward the mesial of the crown. So clinically, if you look at the, the photograph over here, so somewhere in this area here, if you had to kind of guess and try to, to gain access to the abutment screw. So just radiographically, you can start to make some uh, estimations and guesses on, as to where you can find the access screw. Because looking at the occlusal table, you don't know whether or not you want to start drilling through the center over here, off to the mesial, off to the distal, etc. So this is a little bit of a hint. So what we're looking at here is the, the dental implant, and there's a, an abutment, a custom abutment that's secured with a screw into the implant, and then this large PFM crown that's cemented on top of the abutment. And the problem with this case is that the retaining screw connecting the abutment to the implant has come loose, and that's why the entire crown assembly is, is loose. So short of simply trying to pry the crown off of the abutment, which obviously would solve our problems, we want to gain access to the abutment screw without destroying the crown if we can avoid it. So the first measure is to try to lift off the crown. If that's unsuccessful, then we want to try to preserve the crown and the abutment by drilling through a particular space in the access hole, to, sorry, through the crown to allow us to gain access to the abutment screw. Okay. So in this situation, I mean, of course, a radiograph is useful. Um, but what I always like to ask is if the patient has uh, the master cast, the implant cast that the crown was made on. And we are fortunate that this patient did happen to have the cast. And so what we're looking at here is basically the, um, the master um, cast for the implant crown. And what I did was I took a guide pin and I positioned it onto the implant and had our lab fabricate this little jig that basically um, sits on the adjacent teeth and fits over the crown and will basically indicates where the access channel for the implant uh, abutment screw is. Okay, so we can take this little jig and try it in and you can take an appreciate an occlusal view for this and you can see where one could estimate where the um, where one would have to drill through the crown in order to gain access to the screw 
And so um, here's the case clinically and the, with the jig in place. And you can appreciate that the hole, this axis hole is more toward the mesial of the crown, not through the center, not through the distal, but really in the, in the mesial. And you can appreciate in this slide over here that the jig was made to fit over the crown because we had a cast of the, the crown as well as the master cast. The jig fits over the crown and it basically dictates or directs my handpiece and my burr and I've used just a diamond burr initially to cut through the porcelain and then a metal burr to go through the, uh, through the metal of the crown. And in this view over here, you can see that we actually, uh, once we drill through the metal, um, we are successful in finding the access hole for the implant crown. And you hope that the, the previous practitioner sealed the access hole with a, with a soft material, cotton pellets or Teflon tape, and, and you kind of just strike gold when you feel your bird drop and you feel a kind of a cavity there. So at that point, we know that we're into the access chamber for the crown, um, and then we remove the cotton pellet and, uh, and then gain access to the screw. So this is what the crown looks like when we remove it. So I did another Oasis discussion previously about some of the challenges of cementing uh, implant crowns on, uh, on custom abutments. And this is one of the biggest challenges where you get excess cement at the, um, at the abutment crown interface. So that was just, I thought that was a really nice incidental finding to document here. So essentially now we've converted the cemented crown on a custom abutment to a screw retained crown. So there is no need for me to actually even separate the two pieces together. We just removed the excess cement, polished up the crown, and then delivered it again into the patient's mouth. So there's the crown that's now been converted from a cemented crown on a custom abutment. Now it's all in one unit and we've repositioned the crown in the patient's mouth. We've torqued it into place, sealed it uh, with, a, uh, with a cotton pellet or Teflon tape and composite resin, and then made the appropriate occlusal adjustments for this sort of situation. Um, so that was just one way, a predictable way to really try to um, pinpoint the exact area where we can essentially, you know, achieve or gain access to the abutment screw and not destroy the crown, not destroy the abutment and be able to, to restore the patient back, put them back together in a very cost effective and efficient way. Thank you very much, Dr. Hatcha, for this case. Uh, the information was very valuable. Um, I was wondering, is it okay to, uh, to give your email address so if there's any of your colleagues have a, have a question, they might, uh, they might ask you a question, would that be okay with you? Absolutely. It would be my pleasure. Perfect. So we'll add that to the post. And uh, thank you again for taking the time to speak with us today.